Welcome back, everybody, to the Sit Rep Podcast. I am your host, Ariskany Jim, and I'm joining you today for a Wednesday night stream. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see me and my hobby desk. All right, cool. There we are. So, uh, one more time. Like I said, everybody, um, we're going to go ahead and try to build uh, some chain link fences here for a bit of scatter terrain on the uh, on the Sit Rep Podcast. So, of course, what we normally do on the Sit Rep Podcast is any historical gaming, really, but we really focus on post-1945, uh, World War, uh, you know, post-World War II kind of material. And one of the big hurdles that I think a lot of people uh, run across is they don't have modern terrain, or they don't think they have modern terrain. Actually, they, they, they may already, they just don't know it. And um, one of the ways that you can really kind of update any uh, World War II or even World War I tables uh, that you might have, buildings, streets, um, other pieces of urban terrain, is by just a little bit of scatter terrain, and it can really update your table really quickly for not much work. And chain link fence is really a great way to do that. So, um, real quick, here are some chain link fence pieces that I have already set up. Um, I'm basically just going to go ahead and try to build some more of this stuff here because I don't really have enough. Uh, you've probably already seen it on my tables on the Sit Rep podcast. Um, so, I, you know, you already know I have some of it. Also, a lot of you, I'm sure, already have it. Uh, but let me go ahead and try to put some on the table here. Um, down here on my little hobby, my little improvised hobby table here. And what it allows you to do is... Here's a 28 millimeter figure. Uh, it's a little big for 28 millimeter. I do most of my, oops, let me get where you can see it. I do most of my um, gaming here. Like here he is hiding behind the fence. Hey, hey, hey. So again, this is 28 millimeter figure. I, this fencing is really made for 15 or um, 20 millimeter, which is what most of my moderns are in. So my webcam, unfortunately, is set up for hobby uh, over top uh, kind of view. But just for a quick comparison, here is a 1 to 72 BMP, and then this is him kind of driving into a parking lot, um, like kind of behind the chain link fence. A couple pieces of chain link fence can really help your table look more modern. So everybody's got buildings, everybody's got telephone poles, everybody's got, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, for their, like, say, World War II tables. A lot of people have World War II terrain. A lot of companies out there make World War II terrain. Throw in just a little bit of chain link fencing. I mean, name one thing that is everywhere today and was nowhere in 1945. It's chain link fencing. Uh, chain link fencing and a couple little pieces of scatter terrain and um, like, like signage, especially if it's in Arabic or Cyrillic or Vietnamese or something like that. And your table, your 1940s table is going to jump to the 1960s, 70s, 80s, even today uh, like that. It's going to be no big deal at all. So um, we're going to go over uh, today how to make a little bit of um, fencing kind of like this. So I already have a bunch of fencing made up. And what I'm going to try and do today is to sort of bulk out my uh, uh, the, the pieces of uh, terrain that I already have. So I may move this little camera a little bit further over. Because we're trying to get where people can see our, our faces here on the Sit Row Podcast a little more often. Um, and, uh, you know, get a little bit more of a personal touch here. We do a lot of screen display. We do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, no video uh, podcasts, obviously. What we're trying to do is get a little bit more, you know, FaceTime on camera. So we're trying something new. This may not work. So apologies if I don't make a lot of eye contact with the camera tonight. I'm going to be looking down at my hobby table. I've got two cameras going at once here. So I found that when I was making my fencing, um, it was always very helpful to me to make all the pieces the same size or the same length. Okay, so hopefully that is showing up there on camera. Okay, so all my fencing is the same length and the shorter pieces are exactly, or maybe not exactly, but are pretty close to half length. And you don't make anything three quarters. You don't just make up random pieces of fencing. All your fencing is either the same length or 50% that length. 
And that's because just about everything that you see, obviously, in chain link fence is going to be a square or a rectangle. So you're going to need a lot of right angles. Um, you make them in these modular pieces. Again, I kind of consider it like scatter terrain. So you can just kind of Lego block it together, put it around your streets, your buildings. You can make immediate parking lots that look very modern uh, like that. And an important piece of that I found was to properly plan out the, your, the sizes of your uh, of your chain link fence segments. So again, I have basically two lengths. I have full length and then I have half length. So long story short, take your first shot. We're gonna try and make some more of this stuff today. All right, so I've got some of the pieces already cut out ahead of time. I'll explain what I make it out of. I'll explain the different uh, materials I use. Um, I know a lot of you may already have chain link fencing of your own, either uh, purchased or you know you make it yourself. Uh, it's certainly very easy, as you're about to find out. Um, but this is how I make it for the scales I like to work in, 15 and 20 millimeter. Uh, there are some other great videos out there where people make it out of car body uh, mesh, uh, especially for the larger scales. Um, 28 millimeter, uh, 28 millimeter heroic, 32 millimeter, some of the bigger stuff like out there, even 40 mil if you get to the really big stuff. Um, I usually use a much smaller uh, wargaming scale, so I use uh, a much smaller uh, scale fencing. It's actually a little easier to work with too, I find. Okay, so one thing that I have found in uh, quite a few of my tables and videos, in fact, if you look at my, if you look at my tables, either in photos or especially in videos, you'll see that sometimes um, I'll have my vehicles just kind of, you know, I'll be like moving my, my army around and it's very easy to knock over these minute, these, uh, these uh, pieces of fencing. They're not the steadiest pieces. It's one thing I've often kind of lamented uh, when using this stuff. That's because when I first made up these pieces of uh, fencing, you'll see I made the base piece very, very narrow. I wanted to make it as unobtrusive as possible. The problem is it, um, it falls over very easily. So I'm trying to get away with that. I'm going to go ahead and let it be a little bit more obtrusive and use some heavier pieces on the, uh, on the basing. So here we are. Um, I've gone ahead and got some pieces already cut out of some very thin kind of balsa wood. As you can probably see here, my, it's a lot bigger. I'm going for like a quantum leap up in uh, sturdiness of the basing because these things fall over a lot and it really gets on my nerves. Especially if you're in the middle of a video and you're trying to, you know, show a, uh, show a war game. Um, you have to like re-record a whole segment or something and it's really annoying. But anyway, I'm going to use some slightly larger pieces of material. Okay? No worries. You can use other stuff if you want. Um, I was going to use these popsicle sticks. These popsicle sticks are nice and thin. So they're not very like you know obtrusive on your gaming table. They're they're nice and wide. They're already cut you know to the right width or whatever. The problem is for me at least uh, they're not the right length. So I wouldn't be able to use it with my existing share uh, my existing um, chain link fence stock. And I have a lot more than this. This is like one fifth of my current uh, stockpile. So I want to still be able to use this stuff. But at the same time, I want to make new stuff that is the same size, so it meshes and it can still be used with it. It'll still look a little weird because it won't really be the same width of the base, but that's fine. I'm not worried about that. But just so everyone knows, I mean, obviously, popsicle sticks work fine. Um, any kind of like balsa wood strips work fine. You can even use like heavy mat board if, if you know, if it's not that big a deal for you to get a hold of it. Uh, mat board can actually be more expensive than balsa wood, <laughs> depending on where you get it, but no worries. Um, I'm also using some of these very, very small uh, dowel sticks. Um, you can get this at pretty much any craft store, at least here in the US. Uh, it's not very big. Uh, that's not a really big deal. Um, not very, uh, not very wide. It's usually pine, so it's not the easiest to cut through with typical hobby tools, but if you have something like a little uh, balsa wood or a pine wood kind of a modeling saw like this, this works fine for pretty much any kind of wood you're going to use. Or to be honest, just a regular uh, nice sharp X-Acto blade will cut through this stuff easily enough. Just get a good cutting board, and if I can find it, which of course I can't now, um, give me one second everybody. Apologies, apologies. So I don't have my really good knife here. Oh yes I do, it's right here. I 
to get rid of this. Sorry. But if you get a nice good knife with a good thick handle, you can cut anything balsa or even just thin pine pretty easily. You just kind of stick your blade in there, get a good uh, foothold in there with your blade, and then just kind of roll the piece of balsa wood or pine back and forth and you'll get through it pretty shortly. Um, or you can use like garden shears or something like that if you have a nice big set of kitchen scissors and your girlfriend's not looking, your wife isn't looking because you're going to ruin the, the, the kitchen shears. So don't let her see you do this. Um, you make sure that, you know, you can cut through it easily like that. Then you can go back with your uh, X-Acto blade and you can cut it, get a much finer cut uh, that way after you do the bulk cutting. That's kind of what I did with these uh, pre-cut pieces here. Um, I've got enough that's going to get me through tonight's work. No worries there. Okay, you'll notice that it is cut to the same height as my pre-existing pieces and my my new base pieces are already cut to the same length as my existing long piece <sighs> he said long piece and my um my little short stubby pieces okay so no worries there long story short we've got everything cut now as far as uh building materials go the last thing i'm going to talk about besides like glue and paint and silly stuff like that are where you actually get the fencing from so again for this scale again 15 or 20 millimeter uh fencing i use something like this hopefully that comes out okay on camera let me see if i can there we go um you can get i bought these at walmart you can get this stuff at walmart target any kind of a dry goods store any kind of a big package store it's really easy um or a dry box store that kind of thing it's the uh splatter um the, uh, the uh, splatter screens that uh, you get for your frying pan at home so bacon grease doesn't go flying all over the kitchen or whatever um they're really really inexpensive you get a whole you know you get at least like two or three uh things like this i think there was like three or four bucks a piece uh maybe five or six tops but again you're going to like walmart or you know a store like that it's not that big a deal and a little you know one or two of these little you know two piece sets will last you quite a while as far as making fencing goes it's a very very cheap very inexpensive and a very forgiving um kind of material here so what i do is i obviously cut around the inside of the uh the little aluminum frame that it comes in and once you do that it's super thin it's absurdly uh easy to work with so i'm just gonna go just to show you how pliable and, and manageable this stuff is I mean, I cut that easier than paper. Okay, and even once you cut it, if you want to make curved pieces of chain link fence, like around an arena or something like that, um, or a parking lot, or, well, most parking lots are square or rectangular, but who knows, maybe a garden or a fountain or something like that. Um, you can bend it any way you want. It's going to hold its shape. Uh, you can fold it if you want to do a corner piece. It's going to hold its shape just fine. It's absurdly easy to work with. Um, the only possible issue is when you cut it, especially if you cut it quickly, you get a little bit of jagged parts there. It won't really cut you or break you open or make you bleed or anything like that, but it, it is, just be a little careful if you have your fingertips around an actual um, cut segment. Tiny, tiny little PSA there. It's it's not really, like, this doesn't really hurt, but if you're holding it and, like, it, it rips out of your hand, you might give yourself a little paper cut or something. So just be careful on the um, on the little ends there. Um, where you've cut it all right and that's pretty much it that some super glue um, a little bit of paint a little bit of wood glue and we're gonna be set all right so we're just gonna make a couple pieces here and see what's going on here with mr. chat oh verbal bite has joined the stream okay guys I got another computer over here that I'm checking the stream out on um, hello crew and God bless us. Vorpal Bite, Vorpal Bite, welcome very much to the stream. God, glad you could come out. Uh, I just got home from the greatest experience I've ever experienced. TOTW21. Oh, Take on the World 2021 is an event I recommend to everyone. Uh, is that a, uh, a convention or a tournament or something like that? That sounds pretty awesome. Who is that homeless guy on the screen? Well, I don't know, man. I don't see any homeless guys on the screen. I'm literally sitting in my home. So I'm not sure um, <laughs> what we're talking about here. 
Uh, one thing that is here everywhere today and nowhere 1945 McDonald's. Uh, yeah, if you check out my um, my uh, Ukraine 2014 um, war uh, series, there are literally um, Russian McDonald's in the background, or in this case, Ukrainian McDonald's. Um, that was one of the first buildings I built uh, for my modern table, so I actually totally agree with that. Not a terrain builder or painter, says Whirlpool Bite. Uh, I want to buy and go. All right, well, this may not be the stream for you then. Um, 60 millimeter is my favorite, and you know what? Hold on, we'll see. Uh, you know what you never find anymore? Uh, two, two stick popsicles. That's actually true, now that you mention it. It's been a while since I've seen one of those. Okay, so again, we've gone over the material super fast. Now we're actually going to talk about uh, cutting some of the stuff and making some pieces. All right, so again, I want it. You can cut it any size you want. Just make sure it's a little bit smaller than your than your posts. Uh, if you've already cut your posts. Um, so just for my sake, what I am going for here, if I can find a pen. Oh, I never quite have everything I need. Ever, ever, ever. All right. Um, this is just because I want it to be the same size as my existing stuff. You guys are going to laugh when you see how easy this stuff is to make. You're going to be like, whoa, I thought a Riskini was cool. I didn't know that shit he built was like that easy to do. Holy crap. He's not nearly as impressive as I thought he was. Right. Again, this stuff is super easy to cut through. Now, if you want to be a purist, um, this stuff does kind of have a grain to it. I don't know how much of this the camera is picking up, or like like a pattern or like a direction to it or whatever. Um, you can see here I'm kind of going on like a 30 degree angle. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if you're working on a bigger scale, you may want to pay a little bit more attention to it. But for 15 or 20 millimeter, it doesn't matter. And there's our first slice of chain link fence. It, it was that easy. Get our trash out of here. Make sure it's long enough for our to match our original piece. And this stuff tends to work better if it is all the same, if all your pieces are the same size. Because that way you can build squares and rectangles much more easily. Which is how most chain link fence, if you look out in the world, most chain link fences are around a square or a rectangle uh, of some sort. Don't have it all be the same size. Have at least some half size stuff. Okay, because what winds up happening is you're going to be like, oh, I want to build a, a, a little parking lot for my Humvees or something. You know, and before you know it, if you have four pieces and they're all the same size and you have no smaller pieces, how does anybody get in there? How does anybody drive around in there? Little things that, uh, you know, people might not think of. How does anybody get in there? How does any, you know, you have to have some pieces in there, some, some shorter pieces. And then what you can do is you can have some other pieces kind of go like this on your table. And it looks like those little sliding gates that people use or you can have a piece like that sticking out in the street like someone's opened up a gate or whatever or you can just kind of put two in there if you want to be super uh, realistic or whatever and it looks like someone just left the parking lot open all right something like that the point is don't make them all the same size because then you're going to have either unrealistic parking lots or enclosures or whatever you else you want whatever else your chain link fence is actually going to be around and no one's going to be able to get in or out of it you can just like make squares and rectangles and say it's closed but it's going to look weird all right so starting from here there are two ways you can do this i keep I gotta keep it up here because I gotta remember the middle of my table is kind of covered up by the camera a little bit. I want more of the camera actually. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see what else is going on on both of our channels. 
any day, Mouse. Alright, cool. Alright, you can either put your posts on your um, fence ahead of time. Okay, like so. And then um, glue the whole thing to your uh, base. Or you can glue your posts to the base ahead of time and then put your glue on that. Or uh, hang your, 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 your actual mesh on that. Um, I'm going to try it both ways because it's been so long since I built these. I don't remember how I did this the first time. These original pieces of... Sorry, these original pieces of uh, mesh are so old. I don't actually really remember how I did them. Uh, I know I'm gluing wood on wood, and I could use, just use wood glue. I always like this thick gel Loctite super glue. Always my favorite. tough to do when I'm reaching into a work area because I can't work right underneath me like you usually do in hobby because there's a webcam there that's not really in the center but it's close enough and it's already in place all right never mind that's fine so what little um hacks I guess is the right word what little uh, tricks do you guys use in the chat to update, a, to change the uh, the look of a table? Because wargaming can get very, very specific. Um, North Vietnam looks very different than South Vietnam. Um, First Corps sector in Vietnam, whether you know it or not, looks very different than the Mekong Delta or Hobo Woods or Warzone C or you know the Iron Triangle any of the other famous but the Pleiku Islands um, the idea of just a generic say Vietnam table or Afghanistan table or Iraq table just is kind of bullshit uh, there's no such thing um, but there are little tricks that you can do that will allow you to sort of change the location or change the flavor or character of a table from one to the other. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do today, guys, is build two long pieces and two short pieces. Um, do I have any more? Yes. Okay, good. Making sure I had more of my little, my little uh, posts here to hang my mesh on. Don't think I'll get all of these done today on stream. I probably should have focused just on one, but that's all right. Because here's a couple little steps there that we do um, would it be easier in your hobby positioning uh, session for 11 to move the camera to the top is that possible the camera is up top it's it's looking down the problem is if you put it too high you're going to lose uh, focus on the table and then what happens is you get your big graposaurus there into the camera and it looks terrible because everyone's looking at my bald spot um, or if it's like too close you wind up bumping it with your head and it, that's not good um, so the camera's right here, and I'm just kind of having to reach over the table a little bit. It's fine. Plus, this gives me something to complain about. That's the most important thing, is that I have something to bitch about. Everyone knows this. All right, while these uh, post pieces here are drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut out some more um, lengths of actual mesh. And I'm going to be a little wasteful with my mesh, I think, and try to get to where it is hold on let me move these other pieces out of the way here a little bit i'll show you what i mean i, I again i don't know if it's going to come out on camera but let me get some room to work with here and hopefully i'll show you what i mean 
Oop, that didn't work. All right, good news. One of my mesh pieces just fell off a shelf and it didn't break, so the glue was working. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see like where the mesh is on this. And if you look on this piece, especially if I get it closer to the camera, it's not really straight up and down. So I might wind up recutting this piece. My anal retentive side is getting the better of me here. Um, so it's basically, do you cut it like this? Do you cut it like that? Do you cut it like this? And then you know, go up and down with your strips. Um, again, this stuff is really cheap and easy to work with, easy to come by. So it's not that big a deal. But I think I'm going to go ahead and recut this piece. Because I know I said earlier in the stream it didn't matter. Um, but it's, it's starting to matter. At least to me. So I'm looking at how the actual mesh is laid out. And I'm going to try to line up my ruler with the top, air quotes, the top, air quote, unquote, of the mesh. So again, I'm not sure this is coming out, especially not like that. I don't know if this is coming out on camera, but there's actually like, you know, a grain or a grid uh, to the way the mesh is. And to make it look just a little more realistic, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting on this angle here. Damn it. Oh boy, this is a quick way to ruin your magic marker. Yeah, this stuff cuts really easy. Square it off. Yeah, so hopefully you guys can see that. That looks a lot more like realistic chain link fence. Comparison, here was my old piece. Look at that weird kind of cockeyed angle there. So I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see that on screen. Hopefully you see that the bottom part looks a lot more like real chain link fence than the top part. And it's just because of the angle at which I cut it. So I know I said before that it didn't matter. I, I guess it kind of does. I'm sorry. Sorry, folks. A risky gym lied to you again. He really is about a useless son bitch. strips let me get one or two more strips and we'll have definitely have enough just to finish out today's uh the pieces we kind of have cut out for ourselves today I'm not at a real hobby desk. How off is that? No, that's not too bad. All right, that should keep us covered for the amount of work we want to do today. So one thing you want to try and do is get your um, chain link fence as flat as you can you try to mount it onto your uh, little wood piece. I 
just bend it very gently where the last piece is so I know like what length to cut it. That way you don't even have to mark it. And that's what the first piece is going to look like. Not entirely sure this experiment is working here as far as camera space goes. Because whenever I look up, I realize that my camera is not. Ooh, okay, major problem. Ah! realizing that my camera is not, uh, is kind of blocking my, my, my actual work area. Come on and stick, please, please, please just stick on there. Trying to get it, see the problem is it's mesh obviously, and I'm trying to get it to stick to the post without sticking to my finger. Because it's mesh, the glue comes straight up, so. Welcome to my world. Like, yep, there it goes. Alright, there we go. We got that one on there. Sweet. So there is our first piece glued together. There's the outside of the fence. There's the inside of the fence. And we will uh, then go to painting it as soon as I get these other pieces put together. Come on, stick to the damn post already. Finally. All right, there's our next piece. Oh, and it just came loose again. two pieces down, two longer ones. Uh, why does glue always stick to people more than it does the parts trying to do? Uh, what else we got here? Um, right, unless they're in a tank, then they just drive through the, uh, they just drive through the chain link fence. Yeah, chain link fence isn't usually a tactically significant problem. Um, on most battlefields, you can see through it, you can drive through it, you can almost, I mean, not really, uh, walk through it. Um, you can definitely jump it. Um, any kind of, even a light fragmentation grain will go right through it. Uh, it's not that big a deal. It just, it's, it makes your table look modern, and it adds a really nice touch. Um, regardless of time period, I mean, unless it's inappropriate, you don't want to have chain link fence on a medieval battlefield, you know. But it's just one of those things that not people, not many people think of and put on their tables. I have just completely reused World War II tables with a few pieces of chain link fence and a little bit of signage. Uh, my Ukraine tables became Hoy City in 1967. Went from Ukraine 2014 to um, 
uh, South Vietnam, specifically Way City, First Corps Sector, in 1968, obviously, a Tet Offensive, with a little bit of chain link fencing and about half a dozen pieces of signage. That's really all it takes. And some, you know, swip out the, the pine trees for palm trees, and boom, you got it. Especially when you live like me, I only have like a small dining room that I get to game in, so no big hobby room, no studio. I cannot sit down and, you know, build, um, oops, I'm not on camera, sorry. I cannot just sit down and, you know, build a bunch of tables and keep them in storage. That just isn't how my life works. Everything I build has to be able to come apart. Everything has to be broken down, fit in a shoebox. Um, if it can't fit in a shoebox, it's not terrain, which is sometimes a real pain because it really limits what you can do. Or at least you think it would. Um, I found that with a little bit of patience and ingenuity, you can overcome that kind of stuff and make your table where you can really, you know, break it down and, you know, store it for long periods of time. Okay, that one went together much easier. Yeah, these are already standing up much easier than my old ones. Holy crap. Of course, I'm, I'm using almost obscenely huge um, base pieces. <laughs> oh, wait, that's the wrong... Uh, I don't want to use that piece. There we go. Again, all I'm doing is like to measure the piece is to kind of use my my thumb and it kind of bends it around uh, the post a little bit and that tells me where I got to cut it super easy this is some of the most forgiving and easy to use uh, materials um, I've seen in a while I've experimented with using it as some kind of uh, whatchamacallit um, a camouflage netting like you think it might work especially after you uh, spray paint it down obviously I haven't really had much success with it yet you know use it as some kind of camouflage netting, netting if you put some leaves in there and make it look like camouflage uh, mesh and uh, but it, so far it hasn't really worked uh, in that regard yeah I thought maybe because it was so bendable and so pliable you can make it any shape you want you can you know make a little piece of uh, camouflage netting and kind of stick it on your vehicle obviously you'd have to paint it and um, stick some um, some of those little pits, slips of fabric and you know foliage that they use in this kind of material um, another thing it can do is you can put it around your vehicle um, again I haven't personally experimented with this but it is something that you could try if you were interested and make like some kind of RPG uh, cage obviously you would use much smaller pieces than this uh, but make like RPG uh, cage RPG fencing like you see in some armies but for now we're just sticking with our chain link fence with our last piece of glue and then we'll get to some painting super fast Now for painting, there's a little bit of spray involved. I will have to step off camera to do my spraying. So I do apologize in advance for that, but I will have to step off camera for just a minute to uh, get my spraying done. Okay, so there's the fourth piece. Okay, so we're going to maybe let those dry for just a bit. Um, obviously, I'll start spraying. Oh, let go. Uh, I'll start spraying on the pieces that I've you know, already had drying for a little while. You guys, you guys may recognize my other girlfriend, Arena, my BMP. Thank you once again, Madman, for sending me that model. I will check out Mr. Chat. Um, okay, here. Um, 
Would it be easier on your... Okay, we're talking about positioning of the camera versus the hobby. Okay, no worries. That's fine. Um, the camera insert box moved to the top of the screen. No, it didn't. I'm looking at it right now. Um, the camera insert box moved to the top of the screen. I don't see what you're talking about. I'm not seeing any camera boxes. Uh, unless you're talking about the, the this little camera box here. Um, but that's where it's supposed to be. Um, I like your trick of printing out the street signs and billboards from other countries and putting them up there for flair. Yeah, it helps. Um, it helps change the date and location of your table. Especially if um, your table takes place in a country where the language is not the same alphabet. I mean, it's one thing to have, you know, French signs or British signs or who knows what. But if you're in like a country in the Middle East or in the Ukraine where all the letters or all the signs are, of course, in the Cyrillic alphabet. Or if you've got things like uh, um, Asia, where you've got a lot in uh, uh, either, well, who knows where you're at. But let's say you're in, uh, let's say you're in Vietnam. You know, some of the Vietnamese signage is very distinctive. Um but give me one second here. I will have to kind of step off screen for just a moment to uh, put some spray um, on these pieces. So let me find what I'm looking for here. Oh, it's right, right behind me. Um, the stuff I use is very simple. Um, because I build my stuff out of so many different materials, it is always... Uh, it's always best to use simple paints like primers that stick to just about everything. Oh, you're talking about that little uh, that little blue box, Jen, for focus. Yeah, I don't know how to get rid of that. Like there, like okay, now it's not popping up, but before it was popping up. But if it pops up, if it pops up again, I'll, I'll try and get rid of it. All right, guys, give me two seconds here. I'll grab these first two pieces. Not a whole lot of uh, ventilation here in my half-ass studio, gotta tell you. So if the stream suddenly goes dark, you know what happened. Unfortunately, this is not a long process, so we're, we're almost done. Okay, we should be pretty much good to go with the spring. Got a little bit on my fingers, but that's okay. foot impatiently <laughs> I should have the jeopardy thing going okay so yeah now our pieces are sprayed no worries there make sure they're on camera the 
They're still a little sticky, so I don't want to start really anything else with them yet. Oh no! Hold on. Okay, one thing that can happen, you want to keep a little bit of an eye out for, is you'll see there that one of my chain link uh, segments, let me see if I can get in better focus there, is sort of filled in. Hold on guys. Oh no, what happened to what's his name? He's gone. That's about as good a, a, a focus as my poor little camera can get. Let me move these other guys out of the way. Yeah, so I got one spot on my... I just literally poke it with a pen, and it, uh, it sort of empties out. Come on. So there, that's kind of fixed. So if you if you glay on with especially if you're using like a primer or relatively thick paint, if you blast a lot on there, uh, some of your segments, especially if you're using a smaller scale mesh like I like to, can actually fill up with paint and glob up and literally pancake over. So you want to keep an eye out for that. But uh, it only happened in one tiny little spot, and I'm taking care of it for now. It's really easy to do. Um, before the paint dries, so keep an eye out for it, make sure it doesn't happen. I'm checking all my other pieces now. Um, they look okay. Okay, and that's the basic construction of it, okay? Um, what I then do, uh, if you guys are interested, I can keep going, is I paint the base, like, not quite black, but like a very, 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 very dark gray. Uh, kind of like a slate black to make it look a little bit like pavement okay or you can leave it gray I'm gonna go ahead and paint it black just because um, it's easier that way I may not do all four pieces here on stream because we would be here you know a little bit too long and I'm not sure you know you guys are too interested in watching me literally paint black and then watching the paint dry so I'll probably just do one for now yeah we've already been up almost uh, 40 minutes here so Uh, I know a lot of hobby streamers out there like to, oh, here's my paint, the paint I use. And I use Citadel number six and, you know, GW number, dude, I, Apple Barrel. <laughs> it's cheapskate Ariskany strikes again. No worries, not a big deal. So I usually have to mix my own colors. Because I don't have a paint for every single thing like some hobbyists do then that happens friggin great absolutely wonderful and it happens on camera again it's not quite black and again remembering that at least with acrylics it always dries a heck of a lot uh, it always dries at least one shade darker than it goes down so I'm gonna aim a little bit lighter than I want the final color to be so I'm gonna hope that comes out pretty good on camera we're looking at a pretty solid uh, dark gray there Hobby area is turning into a mess. What else is new? This isn't even my hobby area. My hobby area is still an American Revolutionary War table out there in the dining room. This is my work desk. I was processing uh, pricing data on, on information.
information uh, for the company I work for here like, what, an hour ago? A little bit less than an hour ago. Oops, here I go, not on camera. Sorry, everyone. Of course, as you remember, these are wood. So whenever you're painting wood, it's not like painting metals. It's not like painting plastic. You gotta blast it on there um, with wood because wood obviously soaks up a lot of paint because it's a very porous material. We did do, uh, we did hit it with primer, which is gonna seal it up a great deal. But again, I didn't want to super glob the, the primer on there, so the primer is a little thin. Obviously, you've seen all my, you know, digital gaming and stuff like that, and people complain that I'm not a real gamer, because I don't use miniatures, please. Um, nevertheless, I wanted to do a little bit of, like, more traditional hobby. I am versed in both disciplines. By the way, that's really annoying. What's a real game? Show me your rule set, chump. You know? And I'm not even really on camera. Oh man, hold on. Here I am talking all that shit. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Let me try to get more. Literally, we're literally painting pavement in blacktop, so we don't have to get uh, that serious with it. Obviously, there's no detail or anything. Just a nice, even coverage. points earlier uh i'm sorry two vorpal bites earlier point um yeah building terrain kind of gets on my nerves too i know some people who really get into building terrain and that's great um but as much as i don't want to build terrain i definitely don't want to buy it but it's not my favorite part of uh the hobby which is why i make this kind of scattered terrain so i can like use the buildings that I have for, you know, 10 different tables. All the exact same buildings I have work just as well. Germany 1945 as, you know, Ukraine 2014. And the difference is a little bit of chain link fence and some signage. Maybe a few other things. So big telegraph poles that you see in World War II, get rid of those and replace with some more modern, uh, you know, looking um, either phone uh, ta uh, phone poles or 
who knows, maybe even like small cell towers, something like that, power cables. The point is, it's in the scatter terrain. Um, another great thing you can do, at least if you're gaming in like 20 mil, 28 mil this doesn't really work too much. Um, but for 20 mil, go out and buy some Matchbox cars. Um, that There are your civilian vehicles, and they usually look pretty modern. You know, if you can find the right ones from either Matchbox or Hot Wheels or something. Maybe distress them a little bit. Try not to buy the super goofy hot rod ones that they have at like the toy stores and Target and stuff like that. You might have to buy them online. But if you can find like just the normal, you know, Ford Focus, you know, Toyota uh, Corolla, you know, the, the basic everyday, you know, cars. Um, number one, the color really makes your, uh, really makes your models pop. Um, or I should say make your tables pop. Make your tables pop. I'll get there, I'll get there eventually. And um, number two, again, Make sure tables modern, man. Grab those uh, old French cafes from 1944. Take the cafe signage off. Put on some. Uh, put on like a Verizon ad, or a Victoria's Secret ad, or I mean anything, anything today, anything that people will recognize. And kaboom, your table is modern. Never mind buying 50,000 new buildings and building these things from the foundation up. It doesn't take much. Okay, so that was a quick coat of basic acrylic paint. Uh, let me get my uh, brush washed here a little bit. Uh, that was some very basic acrylic paint. Um, no big deal. It was very easy. Again, we're painting wood, so you have to lay it on there kind of thick. Uh, that said, it did have some primer on it, so it, it was pretty well sealed up. Not that big a deal. Uh, oh, Warpal Bites gotta go. Thanks very much for the good show. No worries. Um, she also says, uh, I wrapped shoe boxes in the grocery sack paper and through doors and windows. Oh, to make buildings. Yeah, that works. That certainly works. Uh, one thing when you're building buildings, especially if you're building them out of uh, scratch materials like boxes, is don't try to build the whole building at once. Build a whole bunch of little rectangles. And make them all look kind of the same with the same either if you're just printing out skins from Photoshop or who knows what for your bricks or your aluminum siding or your wood paneling or whatever kind of side you have on the on your building um, and what you do then is you can kind of Lego block the building together on your table so that your building can take on different shapes to accommodate certain terrain requirements on your table or it, it doesn't look like just a bunch of shoe boxes put together I use shoe boxes Cereal boxes, jewelry boxes are really good. Those little small uh, jewelry boxes, probably about like this big. And I am losing my voice. Sorry about that. Okay, so. Yep, as we can see, our. Let me get this paint tray out of the way. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty much done. At least the basic construction. Next step. So I'm going to do at least one piece all the way through just to complete the stream. I got my little bag of weed. <laughs> Except well, obviously it's not weed. It's just basic, you know, terrain uh, foliage. And this is going to approximate these little strips of uh, weeds and grass and crap and crabgrass and stuff like that you always see uh, along the base of a chain link fence. It also helps break up this very... Um, obtrusive, very, uh, uh, what's the word, this very obvious base piece, so it doesn't look quite as, uh, quite as obscene. Okay. I've already got enough super glue stuck to my finger, so I think I'll go, I think I'll switch to wood glue, if this wood glue is going to cooperate. Let's see. Not even wood glue, uh, just basic craft glue.
definitely don't want to do when you're working on something like this is develop too much of a pattern in the way you place your uh, little tufts of weeds. You don't want to get, because uh, these, these weeds obviously grow in a very irregular pattern. You want to keep your pattern kind of irregular. And it's okay if it reaches into your, um, uh, I'm sorry, into your actual uh, mesh. I think that's kind of the point. That's kind of what happens, as we all see. Like any nasty, just look at your neighbor's yard. You know that 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 guy. The way he never keeps track of his own property. You know, you're you're always having to look at his weeds and his sh grass and his nasty. Yeah, that guy. All right, so you just basically put a few little tufts of weeds on there. Kind of make sure it sticks through both sides so it looks a little bit more realistic. It's like, you know, obviously uh, weeds and crabgrass and stuff are kind of growing up underneath um, the, um, the fencing. And yeah, you're good to go. That said, I always do kind of like to put some at the post. That's where the pavement is kind of cracked when they had to sink the post down into the concrete or asphalt or whatever they're using. Um, and that's where, you know, the weeds are going to first gain purchase is wherever the pavement or asphalt is already cracked. Little tiny things that make your terrain a little bit more realistic. It's not even the kind of thing that people are going to notice, like, oh, look at how realistic the placement of that of that crabgrass is. It's right at the posts where the, the steel is going to disrupt the pavement, and, you know, people don't think about that. However, it's, you know, one of those things, you know, uh, you might not have noticed it, but your brain did, kind of a thing. Trademark Red Letter Media. It's one of those little things that makes your table just that much more realistic. Oof, that one got a little out of hand. Way too much. Even your neighbor wouldn't let his grass get that out of control. Oh no, it didn't stick. Okay, so hopefully that's starting to show where your crabgrass is kind of coming up through the chain link fence a little bit. Kind of on both sides, it looks like it's growing into the chain link fence. That's kind of what we're going for there. Oh, Jen's getting crazy in the chat here, guys. <laughs> uh, Jen says, uh, where have I been hiding that? This is hobby. Uh, grass. This is not the kind of grass that uh, they have downtown. I'm not even talking about that, everybody. So, yeah, Jen asks, where have I been hiding that? <laughs> no, thank you. Had a few crystals of kitty litter for rocks. Oh, I know what you mean. Um, I know what you're talking about. Uh, nah. I know what you're talking about, but yeah, it's okay. Um, that's mostly for basing. Do I have anything that's kind of... Alright, no, that's, that's way too small. I don't really have any of that handy right now. But I, 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 I kind of know what you're talking about. Okay, um, how long have we been up? Uh, after editing, a smidge over one hour. Okay, let me go ahead and... if you overdo it because um, what tends to happen with this kind of uh, 
like grassy terrain foliage or whatever is you put a lot on and then a little bit of it tends to flake off um, as you know it either dries or you use the terrain or it's stored for a while so it's okay if you kind of overshoot because it's gonna shrink a little bit as far as how much of your grass is actually stuck to the piece of terrain Make sure it gets underneath the fence at least a little bit. Number one, it's going to help hold it in place. Number two, it helps hold the fence in place. And uh, again, that's that's how grass grows underneath fences, as we all know. These aren't my ideas. Um, it also sometimes helps if you get some slightly different color grasses in there. So I buy uh, like this desert sage stuff and the more foresty like moss kind of stuff and I just kind of mix and match it. Now on the other side we can see a lot of glue showing. We want to definitely cover that up. There's another little segment of my chain link fence that got painted over. Very quickly punch a small hole through that. There you go. I doubt that even came out on camera. But right there, one of the small diamonds that was formed by the chain link mesh was actually filled in with a little bit of paint. Uh, the gray primer that I originally uh, pasted on there. So I'll lay these down flat so you can get a better look at them. That's kind of what we're getting. Uh, with our fencing. Oh, I just realized how tall that piece was off the ground. I bet you a lot of dogs and cats get underneath there. David, how does your dog keep getting in my yard and digging it up? Because you have your chain link fence too high. You can get under there very easily doesn't even have to dig down there very much. Come on, glue. Get out of the bottle and onto the terrain. Do it now. So apparently I look like a homeless guy now, at least according to some members of our community. That's kind of strange. He must live in a town where the homeless people are dashingly handsome and insufferably charming. 
if you get evicted in this town for being, you know, super sexy, uh, handsome, and charming, they actually evict you for that. And that's how they get to be, uh... <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that's how they get to be homeless. Somehow I doubt it. Damn you. Ah. There we go. Sometimes the foliage doesn't stick down very well. after I got done uh, putting, you know, handling the pieces when they weren't quite dry. Obviously, in real hobby, I wouldn't be handling it nearly that fast, but you guys do not log on to literally watch paint dry, so I kind of do some of these steps a little bit faster than uh, I would normally. You know, like literally do step one, go get a cup of tea, go get some coffee. an episode of TV or something. Come back to the next piece. By now it's nice and dry. The glue is set. The paint is set. You're not getting it all over your fingers. That's all good. Alright, so that's the foliage. stash, man. Alright. Okay. Now, the last thing that we usually have in these things, or at least I do, if you guys have any ideas about what to put on your chain link fence, put them in the description below, and um, I'll definitely uh, check them out. Or if you put them in right now, I might go ahead and uh, do them right now. But what I'm going to do next is this, um, I don't know if it's coming out very clear. Is that going to work up now? That makes it even worse. Um, let me try on the base of my phone. I'm basically just looking for something nice and, and uh, dark. Okay, there we go. So hopefully you guys can see where there's this streaking of orange. Uh, it's not just a dry brush of orange. You don't just slather it all over there randomly. Okay, you're just going to wind up changing the, uh, the color of the actual fence. Okay, that's not what you're going for. Um, I'm going for a very rust look where, number one, holy crap, some of these posts are crooked. Who built these things? These are terrible. Um, but then again, I mean, we've all driven through neighborhoods where the fencing looks like this, too, so it's all fine. I meant to do it like that, I promise. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, what we're looking for here is this streaking kind of a rust effect. You don't want to put the rust on there evenly. Um, you want it to use it as like a little bit of an excuse for color highlight. A lot on the posts as compared to the rest of the fence. Again, water tends to collect where bolts are driven into... Uh, or basically staples or bolts or whatever kind of rivets they're using to um, fasten the mesh to the chain link itself. Or maybe it goes through a loop and the loop is fastened into is, is sort of a, of a drive grommet or something that kind of drives into the, into the post of the, of the fence. Um, in either way, there's going to be a seam. That's where water's going to collect and where corrosion is really going to sink in. So that's kind of what we're going for here. So here's our nice new fence, except it's a little overgrown with weeds. First of all, get the phone out of there. And now we're going to add some rust. Super fast. I do have some orange. Although this orange is really old. Oof. 
basically I got some orange paint there. Get the same brush I had before, make sure it's got, it doesn't really matter, but make sure I get at least most of the black out of it. Get a clean paper towel here, just in case. Oh, Rasmus has joined us. The rats need to get out of the yard somehow, right? <laughs> um, Rasmus was showing in Discord some of the chain link fence he's already got. Um, is that stuff that you build, or is that stuff that you uh, purchased? So I'm going to put some water here. I'm going to thin out this, uh, this orange a little bit. know how much this is coming out I wish I had a darker uh, material I could use because I'm just realizing that this isn't hopefully you guys just see that on camera a little bit again I'm gonna kind of overdo it at first because uh, chain link I mean I'm sorry acrylic paint always uh, dries darker than it than it goes on So there is some, ooh, yeah, I really overdid it. Hopefully that's not annoying in your ears, everybody, but I'm trying to blow the paint out of the segments of mesh. There we go. So that came out, again, that, that looks a little serious for now. Um, maybe a little too serious. When it dries, that'll fade quite a bit. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that nasty, uh, sort of corroded, you know, old fence from a kind of a nasty neighborhood uh, kind of look. Combat tends, to, this isn't a universal truth, but combat tends to take place in bad neighborhoods. it's a good neighborhood or a well-funded neighborhood number one they probably have a pretty good military or police force uh, to keep violence from getting out of control there and if it's like an invading army like the the, the nicer areas of Baghdad um, at least before the war first of all after all the economic damage we were doing to uh, not damage but you know what I mean all these the sanctions that we were had the no-fly zone and everything else um, oh no put some rust on my pavement. There we go. Um, what winds up happening is uh, those are the areas that the occupying army will quickly um, secure. Like the Americans went into certain parts of Baghdad, like right around the government buildings, uh, the major hospitals, uh, the power station, the, the parts that they had to occupy and control very quickly and they occupied and controlled those places very quickly there was not often a whole lot of combat there uh, most of the fighting took place in the areas that they initially didn't care very much about um, and that is where insurgencies tend to get a foothold so rather on a macro uh, national level people tend not to invade wealthy countries because wealthy countries have powerful militaries. Um, as Marcus Tullio Cicero says, um, money is the sinew of war. Sooner or later, it all comes down to money. So yeah, you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of combat take place in often rather poor neighborhoods. So when you're making terrain. Again, also modern warfare is increasingly urban. Um, more and more you know, people in the world live in cities. I 
think the official metric is uh, relatively recently for the first time give me a second here guys uh, for the first time uh, relatively recently more than half the world's population lives in cities of at least either one million people or half a million people or more something like that so urban combat is going to be more and more of a thing it's it's definitely going to get worse way before it gets better the whole idea of the battlefield is like a field is pretty much out the window that's people don't fight in fields anymore um, it's all going to become urban. So, if you're going to get into modern gaming, which of course many of us are here on the Citra Podcast channel, uh, both uh, team members and our audience, um, get comfortable with the idea of urban terrain, urban rules, things like that. And one thing that you see in a lot of uh, bad neighborhoods is overgrown and rusted out chain link fencing today's stream. So the only thing I'm kind of having to watch out here, uh, back to Hobby Talk, is making sure that the paint never really fills in any of these uh, segments in the, in, in the fence. It's surprisingly easy to happen, especially when you're using, you know, big, uh, thick acrylics like I do. Or even before in the uh, spring part, spraying phase uh, relatively thick primers spray primers that will pretty easily pretty quickly um, fill in some of these uh, little segments here I kept saying I was only gonna do like one segment and here I am working on the last one so that's good Thanks very much, guys, for hanging out. This uh, this is helping me get... Uh, I, I've been meaning to make more chain link fencing for quite a while. I don't really have enough. I have four long segments and I think eight short segments. And I never quite to seem have enough. So for a long time now, like... When did, I, when did I do that Ukraine series? 2015. So for almost six years now. Um, it was late 20, it's late 2015, so for, yeah, for almost six years I've been meaning to make more of this stuff. Or I should say, I made my first batch about six years ago. This stuff here, that's six years old. And now I'm finally making some more to go with it. Uh, in those six years, not a single piece of this has ever broken. Uh, it keeps falling down, because I didn't put it on... Uh, a wide enough base piece. I talked about that at the beginning of the stream. That's why these new ones have such thick uh, and such wide um, bases. Because I'm very proud of how these things look, these older ones, how they've looked. They've been in dozens of articles, not dozens, they've been in, well yeah, dozens of articles. I was about to say article series, that's not right. But they've been in videos, they've been in articles, they've been in article series, they've been on several websites. Um, They've been all over the place. And they always look just like I want them to. And people always say, oh, Rissing, your tables look... Uh... They never say they look amazing, but... For someone who cannot put in that much time into the hobby, and someone who doesn't have that kind of space... Long story short, take your second shot. They don't look that bad. And the thing that... Uh... So, I mean, I've been kind of proud of those uh, chain link fences, but the one thing I have not liked about them... You gotta be honest about your work so that you can go back and fix it and improve. One thing that I did not like about them is those very narrow. In fact, you'll see that in some of my videos. I think uh, one of my um, one of my um, Kuwait International Airport games with the Marine Corps. There's some chain link fencing around one of the parking lots, and every time I go to pick up a dice, I knock the fence over. I'm like, oh, sorry, I knocked the up, oh, it oh, fell over again. Up, oh, it fell over. Yeah, it gets annoying. So hopefully with this new fencing, that'll be less of an issue. Well, why don't you just glue it to the table and risk me? Dude, all my stuff is hella modular. If it doesn't fit into a shoebox, it doesn't fit in my house. Alright, guys. Let me get some of my 
paints out of the way. Again, I know this this some of this um, rustling looks really heavy duty right now, and it is heavy duty. Uh, my only um, thing to, to remind everybody is that it's acrylic paint, basic craft store or, um, acrylic paint, um, and it does dry a lot darker than it goes on. So when that finish is drying, it's going to uh, be a lot less of an issue. Okay, so here are my new chain link segments. Okay, um, like I said before, you can sort of, you know, mix and match them uh, to create almost any kind of a weird, funky shape you like, uh, depending on what your terrain, uh, what your table requires. Um, yeah, they match up pretty well. Uh, that doesn't really show up there. They match up pretty well with my old ones. Again, my old ones are going to... Uh, be on a much narrower sort of a base. Um, I'm not going to throw them away. I still use them. But the new ones are definitely a lot more steady on the table. And yeah, as you can see, um, if you're if you're careful, I said at the beginning of the video for anybody who wasn't here, I make them in two lengths. And all the pieces are the same length. All my long ones are exactly the same length. And all my short ones are the same length. Not only are my short ones the same length, but they're also exactly half the size of my big ones. And that way you can do stuff like this. Okay, a half a piece, I'm sorry, a full piece is always double the length of a half a piece. And therefore you can create all kinds of goofy shapes and they'll always come out you know, more or less correct. As far as uh, like you know, I don't know if all this is showing up on camera, but everything's coming out in more or less right angles. You may have to get a little bit creative of sort, yeah, stuff like that. Um, and it's almost impossible to create a bad shape, at least in right angles, because all of your pieces have a certain interrelationship as far as their size goes. Full size, half size, all the full sizes are the same length. All the half sizes are exactly half. There's no two thirds. There's no three fifths. There's no weird funky, you know, everything is half. Okay, two halves equal the whole. And if you, as long as you stick to right angles, you're gonna have, you know, no problem as far as, uh, you know, creating any kind of shape. Also, you can create doors, like this gate is open, this gate is closed, or maybe it swings open that way for trucks to drive in, who knows what. And uh, yeah, you can create little, little uh, a, a cool little element on your gaming table um, and again this stuff uh, usually works to scale this is the material I use today usually works very well with uh, 15 or 20 mil you could theoretically use it for you might have to make bigger posts but um, you could theoretically kind of use it for 28 mil by the way this is a Pacific War US Marine painted for me by uh, Andy Zek. So Andy, you are still remembered. He gave this to me at one of the bolt action boot camps. And um, yeah, suffice it to say, it's become pretty much one of my most uh, treasured miniatures. Um, so yeah, I'm using it here to show that, yeah, this fencing actually also can kind of work with uh, 28 millimeter. Although it's not really meant for that. That's kind of short for 28 millimeter. Um, but it does work for 20. You know, if this truck or this APC was driving in and out of a parking lot or a staging area or a parceling yard or a factory or who knows what. Or if you would see, there it goes, these, these old ones tip over too easy. Or if they're just invading an, uh, a city that has a lot of chain link fencing in it. So let me get rid of all my old ones for now. And uh, these are my new ones. Oops, that's a new one. The paint's starting to dry on them now, so they're beginning to calm down as far as the... Uh, the absurd levels of um, rust on them go. And yep, yeah, there we go, guys. So we are making progress today. Um, I've now added to my scatter terrain for uh, modern miniatures, modern tables, I should say. Um, and again, this is one of the great ways that you can use to uh, modernize your tables very quickly. Everyone's got World War II buildings hanging around somewhere. Okay, with a little bit of signage, maybe an updated telephone pole instead of a telegraph pole and some chain link fencing that, uh, you know, world, a 1944, you know, French cafe can become a Ukraine, you know, internet cafe 2014, uh, like that. Um, 
So that's why we do it. It, it helps us. Uh, it helps you stretch your terrain and get get more use and more get get more of your money's worth really out of a terrain that you may have bought for a slightly different period. Um, obviously, you can't really put a chain link fence around the medieval castle and expect it to look too modern. Although there are exhibits there are preserved castles that have a chain link fence around them you know come and visit not many people are gonna have a firefight there but hey you never know um the point is chain link fence is an almost ubiquitous feature in modern cities most warfare takes place in cities nowadays um and obviously modern cities because it's the modern era so make some chain link fence guys i've shown you how to do it super easy this whole project might have and i've got plenty i've got dude where did I put that stuff? Um, I haven't even opened the second one yet. Um, I bought two of these literally six years ago. Two of these. Oops, it's pointing the wrong way around. I bought two of these six years ago, and um, I haven't even opened the second one yet. Um, and I'm still not even done with the second splatter tray out of the first kit. I've got a little bit left. So this stuff lasts forever. And again, these old ones, I've been using on the table fairly frequently for going on six years now. Um, it's pretty hardy stuff. Um, so you're definitely going to get your money's worth out of it. Make some chain link fence and pretty much any buildings that you have for World War II or even like, like, like dude, you can get like crusade. I just said you couldn't use medieval terrain. You can get uh, like ancient medieval stuff out of uh, like the crusades. Like old, um, like uh, Holy Land buildings and stuff like that. Put some chain link fence around it. Boom, you're in Fallujah or not Fallujah, but you're, maybe you're in Afghanistan. Um, uh, almost that fast. Um, it's easy to build. It's super cheap. You can make a lot of it in a short order. And before you know it, you can have your tables looking pretty modern. Get some new uh, updated sign. Get like some highway signs. Everyone knows what highway signs look like. And spoiler alert, they look pretty much the same anywhere in the world. Um, either that blue or green with a white around it and that certain kind of yellow or white uh, lettering. Um, you put a little bit of that on your table and I don't care what age your buildings are, it's now the year 2021 on your table. So, um, yeah, just little helpful tricks tricks and tips to get uh, for, for, to help you guys get the most out of your, out of your terrain. All right, so I'm going to catch up with Mr. Chad here. Um... More stuff you could add would uh, set the scale, but you, or but else you use it for 20 or 30 millimeter. Um, yeah, like I said, I've used this stuff uh, here for 15 and 20s. Um, I've never tried it for 28. I don't really have much 28 millimeter stuff. And the 28 millimeter stuff I do have is for World War II, so I wouldn't put chain link fence there anyway. But um, just trying it out now with a 28 millimeter figure it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look like a big parking lot fence. It looks like a little fence like you have between your neighbor's yard and, and your yard. Um, but you can use the same gauge mesh, which is very easy to work with. Just cut out the strips a little wider so your fence stands a little taller. Um, it's, it would actually be you know, pretty easy. Um, that Okay, the one there is from a prison kit. Okay, this is Rasmus talking about the chain link fence he was showing on Discord earlier. Um, but that one there is from a prison kit I picked up somewhere. Uh, it is the same. Oh, it's the same aside from the wire on top. Oh, that reminds me. Um, if you guys want to bear with me for just one second, I'm going to step off camera for just a second. I originally created these barbed wire coils for a World War II Normandy table. Uh, this was very easy. I basically just get some very, very narrow uh, or some very pliable very thin wire. I think this was actually Jen's jewelry wire that she uses for her jewelry hobby, for her beading hobby. And I just basically get it. Um, get it around a pencil, wind it around like 20 or 30 times, and you end up with this cool little coil. Almost like a World War II uh, barbed wire coil. But what you can do with chain link fencing is, if you can figure out a way to fix it there, which I don't think would be too hard, you pretty much just hook it around uh, two of the two of the posts or whatever, and you can get a nice little. Sometimes you see uh, razor wire or concertina wire uh, on top of a fence, especially if it's a really bad neighborhood. And uh, yeah, you can get a little bit of razor wire there. I may I may start doing that one of these days, just for an extra little, um, just for an extra little touch one of these days. You never know. 
I meant to have this stuff out handy um, for the stream, but I, I forgot to get it set up ahead of time. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Uh, Rasmus then adds, then the Russians invade Europe, it would be semi earned Germany doesn't have a whole lot of pristine fields. Yeah. Um, the idea of the battlefield is really starting to, uh, kind of go by the wayside. Um, as warfare gets more and more mobile, uh, first of all, cities be are, are taking up more and more of the, of the available space. Uh, number two, people don't fight over open fields just for fun. They want to take objectives, and those objectives are becoming more and more urbanized as well. And number two, even when there is a void, like a, a big wide space between two cities, um, you know, you control one city, the enemy controls the other city, and you have to cross that open space to fight in that city. Number one, he's going to wait to fight in that city because he has all kinds of bonuses to defense. Um, and taking a city is monumentally difficult uh, from a military perspective. So for him to come out there and meet you on that open field is like the dumbest thing he could do. Um, he's going to invite you into that city um, and fight it out in the streets. Unless he wants to spare collateral damage, in which case he's going to pull out of the city and he's going to declare it an open city, like, you know, happened with Paris twice in World War II. Um, and that's even if the enemy gets the choice, gets gets the enough time, or gets the chance to make that choice. They usually don't, because like I was saying before, with the mobility of modern combat, um, you're going to cross that void like that between the Blackhawks and Abrams and Bradleys and Strikers. You're going to be across that area in no time at all. There's never time for combat to really develop in those open areas. Only when warfare slows down to where it's no longer about maneuver, it's about firepower, do you see the kind of combat that we can recreate in most tabletop war games. And that's going to be modern. That's a, in modern in the modern setting, that's going to be urban. So any little thing that you can do to make your tables look a little bit more urban um, is definitely something you want to look at. Or um, I should say anything that's going to make your urban tables, which you probably already have some stuff for, albeit World War II, make it a little bit more modern. Uh, chain link fence is a great way to, to kind of make that step. So for now, this is Ariskany signing off. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take off. Um, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and the rest of your week. Stay safe, and we'll be in touch very soon. Take care, everybody.